who, who knows what will happen there. But either way, ladies and lads, let's go over to the stage for our team entrances for our final match of the day. It's going to be USA versus France. Nations Cup day one is about to come to a close. We've had some crazy matches so far. I'm glad you guys are still hanging with us because this is still, once again, this is for winner's side. These guys want the best record if they want to go to the winner's side of this bracket coming out of here. هذه هذا صحيح قرب ينتهي اليوم الاول اللي معنا منافسات كانت جدا ممتعه لكن بقينا المباراه الاخيره في المجموعه كلهم كلهم ادوا اداء اسطوري لان وصلوا لهذه المرحله فخلونا بعد شوي راح نبدا ونرحب معنا الفرق ونبدا لكم المباراه الاخيره I appreciate you guys hanging out with us so far but we have another day we got one more match and the teams coming out these guys definitely want to get the victory and I'm definitely fans of them both but one of them a lot closer to my heart, I gotta be real. محد يقدر يلومك لكن من جد صحيح باقي لنا مباراة الأخيرة اللي شفناها أو عفوا بلا صح اللي شفنا منهم مباريات الماضية اللي كانت في الفريقين كلهم حققوا الانتصارات وفعلا هم الحين محددين واحد فيهم بس اللي ممكن يكون الأول في المجموعة واحد فيهم بس اللي راح يفوز في هذه المباراة. With that, let's bring out the first team. Guys, make some noise for Team USA! Looks like that team strategy has been working out so far. These guys have a great record heading into this next game. But I'm going to tell you right now, their opponents are not easy in the slightest. المنتخب الامريكي لعب مباراة اليوم وقدر يحقق النصر كانت ضد منتخب ابيرو هذه ثاني مباراة على الستيج لكن برضو خصمه ما هو خصم سهل خصم برضو حقق انتصار في مباراة كانت ثانية في البث الثاني معنا حتى لكن الحين راح نبدا ونرحب معنا في المنتخب الثاني اعزائنا المشاهدين اعزائنا الحضور اعطونا تحيه لمنتخب فرنسا See up there right now, Super Kuma flexing up there, letting them know he's ready. And once again, this is a well-composed team, a well-comprised team on top of that, made it some of the best and the brightest coming out of France. منتخب فرنسا حقق نصر في مباراة وبرضو منتخب أمريكا حقق نصر في مباراة هذا الفريق برضو جدا أقوي راح نشوف منه أداء عالي في المنافسة الحالية عزيزي المشاهدين خلوكم مستعدين لمباراة غير طبيعية وهي المباراة الأخيرة كيف تقدر تختتمها أفضل من هذه المنتخبات اللي حققوا الانتصارات الكبيرة Guys take a seat get ready for your next match This is the last battle of the day and I want to get to the matches so I'm going to send it straight to the casters والحين اعزائنا المشاهدين مباراتنا جاهزه فخلونا نبداها ونستمتع فيها فخلونا ننتقل على طول مع المعلقين and we are back with gamers 8 nations cup i am here ayano joined by Majin Obama. That's right, and you know what time it is, bro. I know y'all been watching, waiting for this one. Last match of the night, but it's probably for Group A, Peru, USA, France, and Jordan. This is probably the most important set of this group. And very likely, you know, not, not trying to write anybody off, but this is likely, I think, going to determine who gets out on winner side, who gets out on loser side. It, it, it could come down to that. I think it gets definitely, that is the big takeaway from this. They're vying for like that first spot, and that can make a big difference in upcoming matchups as well. You score good here, then you're pretty much set until top eight, allegedly. Yeah, this is, uh, and I agree with with our analysts too. Like, this is probably going to be a tough personal one, I think, for the for the USA team. But uh, here we go, coin toss going to 
Yeah. She broke me. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we're all just having a good time here. I guess we'll find out sooner or later. But yeah, I like what they were talking about in terms of X factors too. You know, mm. Joe Joe Crush obviously winning that first that first game. I would even say that first yep. game in that first set earlier today mm -hmm. against Peru. That looked like a huge load off his shoulders. He won the worst game and got out of his chair celebrating. Yeah. Like, like he's not even close to winning the set yet. You know, only halfway through. But that, that I felt like that did so much for his confidence and just being, you know, for a player who hasn't been on a stage overseas like this. Mm -hmm. You know, in this kind of setting, uh, that confidence can be a big deal, and he's going to need that going into this. Oh, definitely. Because with the way that this team format is set up, man, it, it's tough. Like. Really, only one player from. It, it, I have to assume they're going to put Super Akuma at the boss at the boss point. That would be the wisest decision, honestly. But um, honestly, though, like I can see them maybe going for Jard as well if they want to go for the surprise factor. Because here's the thing about Super Akuma: he is he has the most experience. He is like the most one of the most seasoned EU players in general. He, ha he has fought against these specific players often, and he's had a good track record against them. But, you know, that comes with familiarity. And with familiarity comes, like, less unexpectedness. And you're like, maybe we can uh, make some sort of victory strategy or something like that. You know, Whereas, another point, too, is, yeah. I guess, Goonie's role in all this, too. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, for a long time, they've been, they've been talking about this guy. Like, he's one of the best, most, like, pretty consistent player out of mm -hmm. France, obviously. They talk about his his history of competing and doing really well against players from NA. Mm. But this in particular, like this group of players, I don't know, it's, I feel like it's going to be harder to perform in that same way mm. against the, against this these three Jack players in, in, in particular. <laughs> Team Jack. But he, he has that history behind him. I, I'm curious to see how, how it plays out. This for the selector match, I feel like this is going to yep. be pretty important. Mm. And then they're sending up, Team France is sending up Jod and Team USA is sending up Anakin. Honestly, pretty good picks, honestly. Yeah, and I have to imagine that they're looking to... They got to be looking to run Jot against Anakin or Joe Crush just because of what Spag mentioned, you know, when Joe Crush... When, uh, when Jod and Joey Fury ended up playing at TWT, I mean, Jod, it, it really looked like he was struggling to try to create openings against Joey mm. Fury. Joey Fury pretty much played lights out, had yeah. all the stop signs in place in neutral. Uh, it, it made in a lot of situations Jod's approach really, really predictable and able to. I, I mean, Joey, Joey just didn't let him get any momentum started. Really, in oh. fact, in a lot of those in a lot of those reversal situations, it was Joey the one who was clocking out with damage Ooh. and pressure at the wall. It was mm -hmm. Joey who was able to take advantage. And like, like I said, it was, it was really lights out. So I have to imagine maybe France wants to play around that matchup. Maybe USA wants to try to force that, and, or maybe force Joey into Super Akuma instead. It, it, it's hard to say, but this is just the the initial side switch match. So here we go. Of course, you go into this. You like as the players, you obviously have all of that just playing in your brain. You want to come out with like the best case scenario. So I'm sure they must have considered every possibility when it comes to the player matchups and then also past matchups that we've already. Yeah, and this is going to be a tell as well too, mm. because I have to imagine this. This was a matchup that maybe France was thinking about trying to run. Hmm. Specifically, Jod versus Anakin. Time. Round one. All right, so we're going in. This is the Fight. selector match. It's going to decide the advantages coming in for both teams. Yeah, and what's really going to stand out about Jod, too, is his mobility, his movement. The way he the way he pilots this character, it's as good as you can get. Uh, it, yeah. it, it looks it looks <laughs> unreal because he's, he's using some next level stuff. Yeah, he's using like legacy stuff. It's like legacy Nina movement you see here. Oh my Ooh. god, the halitosis. <laughs> Going with the evil mess, love to see it. Forcing pressure on the sidewall here, you gotta imagine. Yeah, there we go, stiletto heal. Oh, that guarantees it, yep. All right, Team France wins the first wow. advantage. They're gonna get to pick their sides. Fight. Now, let's see if Anakin can steal the last advantage or go straight to Team France. Anakin trying to run some stop signs here, runs nice. right into Jod, running right into that big machine upper. Oh, just short of the wall. Still a good. People guaranteed, Please get yes. some positioning here. Shut up. <laughs> Flips him. All right. Down to the wire, honestly. Yeah. Oh, see him, man. Beat him with that high poke threatening. <laughs> I imagine he's trying to fit for counter hits with that. Like, the whole string's like, guaranteed on counter hit. Good thing to throw out. And there we go. Power shovel from the Anakin. Willing to exchange with it there, but... Nice. Here you go. One round apiece. All right. The this low's really go. working out for Jod here, ah. but that, yeah, that's, he went for one <laughs> minute. <laughs> he caught on to it eventually. He's like, oh me, come on. All right, 
Back to the wall. Got to be careful how you go about this. Ah. Yes, this classic Anakin pressure. Gets the low cross cut into the low strike. Two rounds for Anakin. He's going to be able to get the advantage here. And we got through that very quickly. Very well played by both players. But yeah, the advantages seem to be split up here. Team France has won the privilege, the honor of choosing their sides for the entry and the boss. But Team USA is forcing them to reveal who their first player is. So yeah, Team USA got the counter pick option, basically. And yes. we were discussing this earlier as well, that they must be thinking about counter picks like a lot. They must be thinking about like who do they want to send up against Jod or against Guni or against Super. Yeah, Akuma. specifically playing around player, at, especially at this level too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, character familiarity at this level. Well, that's it, you're not going to catch too many players that mm -hmm. are uncomfortable with certain character matter. Right. It's really going to come into the player matchup. Of here. course. And of course, you know, we start where our analysts were talking about earlier. In particular, some of these players like Super Akuma, they have a. You know, especially in, in recent match match history, they have an advantage over some of the players on the other side. Hmm. So I think it's around, you want to put your best foot forward in that boss fight. I have to imagine they, you know, especially with them sending Guni up first, hmm. you have to imagine that Super Kuma is, is boss here. Ooh, so I'm thinking decision. like, man, they got to they gotta be putting Joey in boss spot. I, I have to imagine. We'll have to see. We're like, Super Kuma and boss, that's a safe decision, honestly. Like, cannot fault them for that. But uh, Team USA has a lot of decisions to make now. They're sending Guni up first, and the order they decide. And wow, it's Joey stepping up, so okay, Ooh. here we go. All right, and that means maybe Anakin's going to be boss then? I would... I would think so. But then, considering how well Joe Crush performed earlier, maybe he could also potentially be the boss too. Well, I mean, that's the benefit of this team, is with the, with the way that it is, is like Joey... At any point in time, Joey could step up and be in that spill, fill that slot role, and mm -hmm. and it makes sense and it's fine. At any time, Anakin can do it as well. So, jo Joe is kind of the X factor slot here. So it is a very well balanced team in the USA. They seem to have a very good rapport among each other as well that they can decide in but this very short time that they are allotted that like okay, these are our positions. We're just gonna have to go around with it. Yeah. So our first match is gonna be Joey versus Guni. Oh, the tension. It's palpable. I wonder what the discussions have been happening over here. I'm curious where Joey's going to go with the character selection. Is he going to optimally... He's been playing more Jack re in recently, but does that mean he's going to opt for the for the mirror? Or is he going to go Marduk? Is Interesting decision, because I do know that once upon a time, Joey Fury also used to play Paul. Yeah, I was going to suggest that. I was yeah. like... Could run Paul, but I, I don't know. Uh, I'm curious to see. Paul would not be a bad decision at all, to be honest, because he used to run like Paul and Jack back in the Echo Fox days when like Jack was yeah, early one of the top two characters. That's true. Yeah, That's true. yeah. Wouldn't be a bad decision, and like Paul is still like a very solid character. Like he's been nerfed since then, but you could still make magic happen with that character. Yeah, uh, exclamate, you know, quotations. Uh, <laughs> nerfed, yeah. <laughs> Allegedly he nerfed. Still, yeah, I mean, he still gets the job done. Like, you know, Legit, just gets the job done. Nerf, but you get put into a 50-50 and then, like, you know. Uh. Of course, of course. So, yeah, Joey has to think of all of that. I do think it, th that would be a very good surprise factor because uh, most people have been focusing on his Jack, on his Marduk. Maybe people, most people have forgotten it. That used that's to it, that's a good point. That's, I mean, it's, it's on the table, you know. Mm. And a solid, well-rounded character as well. Not a lot of weaknesses for Paul either. And you have to, they, I mean, they talked about it earlier, and it's the same thing for all these teams, too. You have to imagine that they've come up with all these scenarios and they've run the simulations in their head uh, over the past few days. Hmm. So, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe they can, maybe they come up with, uh, they pull a head out the bag. We'll of course, there is a lot on the line. So, deliberation is everything up on top of execution. All right, I think we'll be going into it soon enough. We're going to see who exactly these players have on their mind on who is going to represent them in this match. Yeah, this is, like I said, and this, is, this is probably the most important match of the day, I think, for Group A, for yeah. sure. It probably sets the momentum for the rest of the, the set, yeah. It may, it may be even for the rest of the week. I mean, like, Ooh. this is, like I said, this is a pretty heavy one and is likely going to dictate who gets out of this group and winner's side. And looking at some of these other groups and the way they're shaking down, it's big, man. Having uh, USA or having France in the... Winner in the top side of that bracket is 
going to shape up, I think, the, w the way the rest of the week week happens. Definitely. The other teams in this uh, set up, uh, the other teams in this team set are probably going to have to, like, look, in the group, I mean. Because whoever wins here is someone that they have to face, definitely. They're fighting against to win the second spot or the third spot or whatever. Yeah, USA still has to go up against Jordan. Mm. I believe Peru, Peru still has to be has to play their sets as well mm. uh, against, against France. Yeah, definitely. Like, the result of this can decide, are you going to be competing for a spot with this person or are you just going to be trying to sabotage this team as much as possible moving forward? Let's see. Well, the tension is definitely palpable. Every time, like they show the players' faces, they're like proper focused. Like it's like you compare this like Team Korea earlier. We're just having like a good old time with each other. It's like now everyone's like proper serious here. You're, like it's do or die. Yeah, I think for Team USA too, it's about them maintaining a uh, competitive focus. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, it's, especially for these guys, they're all really experienced. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but. The thing is, when they're, you're on a stage when there's a bunch of LED lights flashing, there's <laughs> there's this weird like augmented reality stuff going on, you know, there's like taste keys popping around. out of like digital cubes and stuff like that. We're in the Matrix. <laughs> it's really easy to get distracted with all the lights and the and, and the bull, you know. Oh, but for them, you know, especially these guys, they 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 made a team. They believe in it. They are, they're confident. They're like, they, it's like I said earlier. They said the other night they they feel like they're playing for the top spot. And it's about them putting their money where their mouth is, and mm. they have that competitive focus and drive to do it, you know? A lot to prove. A lot to prove. And that's just, like, beside the whole NA versus EU drama that, you know, I'm sure the analysts will feed into that well enough without me adding to it. But, yeah, yeesh. it's good to be focused, definitely. There'll be plenty of time for pop-ups and having fun later on. I see maybe they're still discussing strategy while all of this is happening. Thinking now, too, that you have to imagine Joe Crush is sitting there thinking he's probably going to have to go up against Jihad at some point. Mm. Thinking. That seems likely, yeah. That seems like the reasonable uh, matchup, I think. Here we go. Phase Joey Fury going up against Goonie. Alright, so far it looks like Goonie's already decided on Jack. It's Joey, really. Joey's character is a wild card here. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Craig. I've over Kazuya for a second, I'm like, oh, huh? I didn't know you had a Kazuya. I was like, nope, I don't, you are correct. <laughs> Back to Marduk. <laughs> while, ex like, w while, you know, we, we heard what, uh, what, what Rip and those guys were talking about is like, mm -hmm. while Jot is the X Factor for France, my question is, what is Goonie's role in all this? You know, is he going to be the one who puts the onus on Super Kuma to bring it home? Mm -hmm. Or... And he's going to play a big spoiler here. You know, I, I I would think Joey was one that NA would want to lean on, but we'll see. Let's see. Uh, maybe they're feeling, like, confident enough with Joey. It's like, oh, if we have, like, a strong start with Joey Fury, then maybe we'll have to worry you. less as the sets go on. All right. It's two big bodies over here on the party Round stage one. as well. Both of them get, like, really Fight. good damage here. Sure. Right off the bat, <laughs> Joey Fury up representing the up 4 3. Oh, my God. <laughs> Down four, one launcher, huge range on that. Very strong start here. Oh my god. Three. Hercules oh. throw. Ah, no. <laughs> oh, 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 back one plus two. Oh my god. Oh, you just going in, fam. Just like, yeah, two touches and then you get grabbed. Wow, mid wake up from Marta. That very clean round from Joey. Very aggressive point. start here. Very quick round, too. It's just like it started and he's dead. He happened. And he never really gave Goonie the opportunity to set up the. Set up the minefield, you know, he never gave, let Goonie lay the land out with jackhammers or, or uppercuts, he just got in there. And he's taking these floor breaks like it's Mid free candy. Again. <laughs> A 4-3, right. stop out! Oh my god, it's domination right now. Joey picking up right where he left off earlier in the day. Ooh. Round start up 4-3 again. Yeah, Goonie's got to find a way to slow this match down, put out some more of those jack stop signs mm. in, in neutral. Be oh, able to slow it him. down, give himself an opportunity to be able to create his own, and create, create some space and play at his own pace like, like this. Because right now, Joey's just running all over. Just like that, Joey just took all of the floor breaks. Now Flash it's just, just short of die. Mm. Mm. All right, Goonie in a very difficult position right now. He's going to have to clutch this out somehow. Now with the jackhammer. And, and at this point, Joey's shown Wake up after shoulder like that, he's gone, he's gone mid twice. You gotta All imagine right. that's in Goonie's head. Signs of life. It's not over yet. Joey, very patient player, just willing to just guard, not even trying to step. Well placed jab to close it out. Easy game one there. That was destruction. 
proper destruction. On the stage of destruction. All around. And if, I, if I was Goonie, I would certainly feel like very rattled by what happened just now. Like, he, he didn't really get a chance to implement like Jack's gameplay at all. Because as you said, mentioned earlier, like Jack kind of excels at like slowing the pace down and controlling it himself. But uh, Joey's Marduk was just all over him. He's like, no thanks, this is my match. Just like that. Yeah, I mean, it, from the first thing he did was a fourth game. The first thing he was just like, <laughs> no, I'm going in. I'm going in and I'm getting, I'm going in on my terms. He, and he never really stopped. He, he just yep. kind of got in his grill and just, just like he that. never got an opportunity to create space and then start to slow down the match. He has to find a way to be able to like create some space and slow down the match and try to pick up, try to, you know, at least stop Joey's advances like that, build a life lead and then try to play keep out. But that, that, that was a very fast game. It's really well. It like disappeared in the blink of an eye. Much like your health bar whenever Marduk does anything, really. It's gone forever. But, you know, Guni has to find a way to like rest the momentum back, especially considering his character's strength lies in controlling the momentum, like slowly and methodically. Whereas with Marduk, it's just like you're, you control it, but you're explosive. Yeah, you gotta take it one round at a time, I guess, but mm. let's see what happens. Must, must be thinking on it now. I'm sure like he must be discussing it with his team as well. It's kind of hard to tell with the angle right now, but yeah. Definitely something that needs ruminating over. You do not want the next match to also be a blowout. You know, that's the other thing too. Both of these characters, you, you didn't see... I mean, aside from the Hercules toss that one time, like, you didn't really <laughs> see throw game represented at all. Joey was just just in, the, in, in inside him from, mm. from moment one. That's a good point, actually, because like, both of these characters have very strong grab games. And yeah, well, on Forgotten Realm as well, you also, get like, you know, like three combos. They, they benefit from dedicated breaks and then like reward from those too, especially exactly. on that stage. Mm. It's very interesting, like throws four gone. Now nah, we're just gonna take the straight like launches, floor breaks with our moves and all of that. I see, I, I believe we're just waiting on Guni to uh, head back into the match. Right. Yeah, there's definitely something going on behind those glasses, I'm certain. The inner machinations of his mind. They're an enigma. Hey, as an outsider, where do you stand with all this? You, this, this when, when, the, when, when Spag is going off on Twitter about USA versus <laughs> EU, like, where, like, what are you guys thinking when you read that stuff? All right, honestly, I'm gonna be like totally honest. Yeah, yeah. I am so biased towards EU, but because I hang out with them the most. <laughs> in terms of like time zones and like in terms of netcode and all of that, I am closest to EU. Like most of the people that I'm friends with as well in EU, most of the people I fight EU, most of the streams I hang out in are EU, so I'm just like automatically biased towards EU. Even though there are like so many NA players that I have like massive respect and love for, you know? It's just like EU is like you gotta pick your mates. <laughs> That's, fair. That's fair. You gotta pick your friends at the end of the day. Though I'm sure you must be leaning towards NA, right? Uh, I, I like it when they yell at each other. <laughs> I like it when they yell at each other, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm, of course I'm rooting for, for, for USA, you know, I want to see them do, do really well. Because mm -hmm. I think maybe they might have been a little bit overlooked. I think people might have kind of disrespected the team comp a little bit. And it's playing out in a way to where, like, you know, maybe you should have paid a little bit more respect. And that sounds odd, because we're talking about Julie Fury and Anakin. Exactly. But it, we'll see how this goes. No. It is quite odd, but I think that also, it's it's um, it's weird that like people wouldn't put respect on like Joey Fury and Anakin, even Joe Crush. He is not a new blood or anything. He has been around and proven his uh, skills time and time again. But I think it's also just a testament to the fact that like how much the skill gap is like decreasing between all of these different regions. So that when you see like the player list for like all of these different countries, it is genuinely hard to tell for like some people that like who could take it potentially in different yeah, matchups. This and matchup in particular, I, man, this is a, this is a really, this is a high level match, but it's a, it's competitive at least. For sure. Easy. Like as much as I'm like I am Team EU, like I I would like France to win, but I genuinely don't know who's gonna take it. Like this could go either way in my book. I'd be worried if I'm Team USA here too. I don't want to ice Joey. <laughs> you know, he's a pretty calm, cool, collected guy, but like mm. this, I'm, I'm not sure. What the holdup was? Oh, oh well, right. may maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Controller issues, difficulty. I guess. All right. Here All right. Fair enough. All right. Now we got it sorted out just in time. Clutch oh, Goonie, I think out. probably oh. having controller issues. Oh dear. All right, never mind. Spoke too soon. But I do notice that uh, they stick with the characters, but they decide to go to Mishima Dojo, which is I uh, probably like the least party stage of all stages. This is this is always a toss-up too, because it's like you're up a game. 
even though Goonie is the one probably like stressing out right now because you know he's obviously having controller issues. Yeah. I, I'm always worried like for especially someone like Joey who. No. Oh. Oh, they're going oh, to Okay, cool. That's fun. <laughs> All right. I I'll be here ready to like hear you finish that thought later on. But for now, we got real tech and online. It's just it's harder to maintain focus for, you know, extended periods of time like that. Even if you're used to playing, you know, for high stakes and getting in the grand finals. Oh, definitely. And resets and stuff like that. When you just have long periods of time where you have to maintain that, that zeroed in attitude mm -hmm. and competitive focus and there's nothing happening. I want you, like sometimes it's draining, it's yeah. you know, it's stamina draining. Definitely. There is like a lot of strategy actually sometimes. That's why you'll notice like a lot of tournament people will go to character select just to pick the same character. Not because they were suggesting, they were thinking of Switch, just because they want the downtime. They want the downtime to just like think things over and like give a little break between momentum. Yeah, that's a trade. And you can tell Goonie's really disappointed right now. Joey Fury with all the momentum. Putting elbow crush, okay, wow. uppercut, nothing uh, after. Bro, that was a huge opportunity. Yeah, so you saw everything you need to see in the bottom right of your screen. Goonie got the launch with uppercut. Nothing after, looks behind him and the rest of his teammates, I guess, in the pocket. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, jo Joey is just like not giving him an inch. He's just taking his mile wherever he can. Stop sign and then, yeah, nothing after. He's not even trying to press. Oh, dear. I think definitely there are some issues at play here. But Joey took it comfortably. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if, <laughs> if you're USA, you'll take that. If you, you'll, you, you'll take the 2-0. Uh, Goody was a big question mark for me in this yeah. matchup, not because of his ability, but just because of who he's going up against and the dynamic there, right? Of course. But that's a 2-0 in Joey's favor. And now, Joey's expression really just said it all. You're like, okay. <laughs> but now it's about the, how the rest of this match shakes down because the thing is, even if Joe Crush wins against Jod, you still have to worry about Anakin versus Of course, Man, yeah. Long set. And it's just like, man, uh, it with the way that this format is, even if both of his teammates lose, Super Kuma could just step up and just play play like a monster two yeah. sets in a row. And then, he could force that tiebreaker yeah, to yeah, happen. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's definitely like every single match definitely counts. You you can't afford to take it easy, like no matter what. That's the, the thing is some the thing for USA is somebody's gonna have to go over Super Super Kuma. That's oh. the thing. Someone is gonna have. To. Oh, is Anakin going up? Anakin is going up against Jod here. That wow. means Joe Crush is gonna be the boss. Uh, well. I'll tell you what, they were saying on the desk, he's the X Factor of this team, right? Mm. He's gonna have to prove it again. <laughs> you know, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to show what that really means. Bro, I think like honestly I don't fault him for such a decision. Like the way he played earlier today, like I, he's got the confidence boost you know, he genuinely I wonder, feels. I wonder if the strategy they want Anakin are they are they betting that Anakin beats Jod? And then Joe Crush, they don't know the, what'll happen. Right, they're just like whatever, man. You just go, go try your best. Yeah. And then it, if he loses, send Joey up against Super Akuma in one set. To, oh, for, I, that's that's what I'm, I'm guessing is the play here. I don't, I'm not sure. That's that. like very smart speculation. They could they could be like trying to force that tiebreaker to happen then. But then that all depends on if Anakin can win against Jod. Yeah, I mean that's it's no guarantee. That's no guarantee, yep. obviously. But Anakin is uh. Probably, probably confident in this matchup, I would have to imagine. But Jod, dude, this dude's built different, man. I'm, mm. I've, I've seen, I've seen the apparatus he plays on. You see, you watch him move. He got the highest. He just that, uh, like, he looks crazy when he moves around with his character in this game. Jod and Nina for real just build different. Jod in general just build different, honestly. His, his fingers must be moving at, like super fast speed, trying yeah, to the highest and all of that. And I mean, we could say it right, but I think between Rave, between, is between Rave and Jod, they were probably out of the TWT final. They were probably the two players that put up performances that I think most people internationally weren't really paying attention to, but when yep. they saw them at TWT, but they had to have been some of the most impressive performances there out of Definitely. the out of the cut of players that weren't the favorites to win, you know? Honestly, Jod's like TWT LCQ run, like it yeah. rivals like a lot of other legendary LCQ runs. Like when I think of Girlanda or when I think of Bilal, like those all were just like also quite legendary. It was like up there. Agreed. It's definitely like, I, I love those players like that come out of the woodwork, just get everybody rallying behind them. Especially if like, Jod is representing a character that is kind of underutilized well, overall in the community. Who's that Nina. brings up Anakin Jack going up against Jod. And what I'm trying to see is, well, he's showing you right there. How is Jod going to navigate the mid-range that Anakin is going to present? That was a very interesting start from Anakin. He's feeling himself. He runs into the upper. Side walking a re-splat here. Nice. He's gonna skip the wall this way. Oh! 
slapped him to put an end to that. We like, no, thank you, sir. No counting allowed here. All right, and just like that, Anakin's back at the wall instead. Kind of just like trying that. to shave off some health with these low pokes. Runs into another jackhammer, Josh. Ooh. In close range, finds a launch. Oh, oh no, the side wall! It saved his life! And wanted oh, to an no. upper, oh no. Oh god, that would mess with me. That would mess with me. I'd be like, that round was mine. But the thing, the thing is, if you're Jod, you can't let that mess with you. That's the thing, you gotta just like let that one go, you know? You earned that round, sure, but it didn't work out. Focus on this round. Alright, Jod is going in, definitely. That was an eternity ago, don't worry about it. Yep, looks like he's taking your advice, Majin. He's just going straight in. Flat. Oh my god. Nice, going with the Betrayer chain throws. Oh, and Anakin didn't break! I have never seen a machine get bent like that. Oh my goodness. What happened? And what, what can I say, Jack doesn't have the, the double locking joints, Sam. <laughs> um, they only bend one way. <laughs> that was insane. It's so rare, like, it's so rare seeing, like, Nina chain throws, and it's so rare, like, seeing them hit. Because most of the time, at least you see yeah, them broken. Yeah, especially at high level, but yeah. with Nina, you have to represent it. Yeah, like, yeah. Her, her throw game is suddenly, like, one of another strong suit. Up there. It is very good. Very underrated. She's got, like, Ivory a throw for every wall. break. Yeah. All right, nice. Oh, Cross no! Cut. Oh, just got a rage upon it. All right, no, but the defense is still solid. Nice. Wow, rage drive. Wow, well, Jod and did not let that phase him at all. He was ready. Fight. He was ready for the debug, he was ready for all of that. Did not let the whiff while standing to phase him at all. Big set here, and just remember, Jod let that first round get away from him. Hmm. But he's battle, he's battle back, got here. Nice, good break from Anakin. Yep, nice. Runs into an upper, now Jod with the advantage. At uh, the wall. Oh, he was trying to go for some big body combo there. All right, nice. Yeah, you saw Jod relying on uh, a lot of, uh, Nina's homing attacks, right? She is back, she is down back two. Yep. To, at the wall like that to be able to try to set up for good Oki. Like that, being able to try to catch, uh, catch attacks, catch kicks. Nina's homing moves, especially, are like really good at the wall because her her homing moves, like down back two, down forward one plus two, they're safe, and then they both wall splat consistently. Yeah, and they they, they reach pretty far in hmm. the mid range. She's got like very good homing moves. Very difficult to step. Nina. This character, okay. man, when she gets on top of you, especially if she's able to get, you know go into a, go into side step one or something like yeah. that, it like she can be very intimidating in close range. It's got to be. It's for Anakin. Again, you saw where he was most successful when he was able to push her out into hmm. maybe like two or three character lengths away, yeah. be able to set up a little bit for Jackhammer versus the up versus uppercut in mid range like that. But Jaw, Jaw with the movement was able to just get in there. That's the way to then do he, it. He stole, he stole around with, with, with the chain grab, you know? Yep, that's the way to do it. These characters have their ranges and you have to play within the optimal ranges. That's how you gotta make do with your advantages and whatnot. Because Nina's a sticky character. She's gonna like get up in your face and that's where she wants to be. But the sidestep one cancels with like all of these different moves, down forward one into sidestep, into QCF, into betrayer, all of that. She wants to be in your face. So it's, it's smart of Jaw to recognize that like that's my ideal range. I gotta stick to that range, even though it can be a bit intimidating. That's a scary place to be, like in the face of your opponent. But I guess versus Jack, it's not as scary. You don't think? Big game right here. Mm. This is uh, man. Yeah. This is probably the the bit. <laughs> I, I want to say this is like the highest stakes for the the, the game that they're gonna play today. Mm. This one right here. Yeah, because think of it this way, like. The way this match goes, it's either gonna introduce a potential for tiebreaker or just have the next match be the final one, no matter what. So yeah, depending on how this goes, it is very important. All right, we're going straight in. Let's see, I, I doubt we can expect any character changes from either of them, so most probably we'll have to look at the stage, see what uh, strategies uh, are being Paradise, played. okay, so you get a balcony break and then... Mm. Stage gets a little bit b bigger down bottom. Very bigger. Like I, th I don't. I think it's hard even for like the wall carry characters to get to the wall if you're starting from the middle even. Wall to wall, definitely impossible. A good uh, could be a good stage potentially for both of them. It's like Nine. Nina doesn't really need all that space. She well, just needs to be boy. in your face. It don't matter what, how much space she have really. You see Anakin right away. Hit and run. I'm trying to get out of dodge. Trying to Very keep smart. out. Very smart. He wants to, you want to stay out of your opponent's optimal range, but stay in your optimal range. Or two. Nice. No break on the team score. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, get him stop. He's trying to chip away with these low pokes in conjunction with those jackhammer. Right. No uppers yet. Running, you see him putting that stop sign out there with the four two. Nice. Trying to control this mid range, not let Jod get in the position. Ooh, but you got him patient. You got hit by the string. 
Oh, it couldn't break the stage that way. Break the wall. Oh. Again, just another rage drive that just seals the deal for John. Beautiful. Thankfully, the side wall didn't hurt him that time. John secures the first round, but Anakin's just going strong. He's not letting that face him. And that's food. See, stop the yard. Oh my god. Volcano throw. Alright, what's Jaw gonna do now? This is where it gets dangerous though. Jaw in range. Perfect. In nice. range and in range. That's Round where it's been three. really. That's where he's probably had the biggest Fight. payoff against Anakin so far. Definitely. Like, it is just gonna be. I feel like this is gonna be dictated by who can maintain their optimal range the best at this point. Oh, looking for a whip punish. Just a little bit too slow. Ooh, nice punish. Alright, tricky situation for Anakin. Not Anakin optimal punish. Anakin rushes at more mid range options. Last punch. That's gonna convert for a full combo. Like, can you get to the wall? That's the hard right. part. Nope. Butterfly, oh my god. <laughs> Diving cross jump. Can oh, wow. opener to Can take opener is the close up for jump. Wow. This is set point. This is big. <laughs> oh my goodness. John, pull out all the stops, homie. You got this. I mean, uh, yeah, this is a very intense equal match right here. Alright, nice guarantee. Oh, he messed up the guarantee follow up. Still little heal. Jod working the lows a little bit more this round. Oh, nice. And he can win the return. You know what else is like a good thing about Jack against Nina? Like, you notice like his uh, jabs and all of that oh managed to reach her. Oh my god. Nice. This shouldn't be dead. I don't think this will be dead. Switch in music. And then... Yep. Last oh my god, slide Ooh. right through the row. Jod 2 0 no. oh, over Annie. Oh, he's feeling it. He's feeling it. He pointed at the name. You remember the name? It is John. Oh, Team France looking hella relieved right now. Super Kuma, especially. He looks super relieved right now. That's a good sign, though. That basically guarantees now that, like, Super Kuma, if he can just win this hour, if he can win this first team, then that's, that's set. There's no chance for a tiebreaker now. No, you, I, you can tell by his body language, you know, Super Kuma is really confident going into the set. Yep. But Joe Crush, man, like I said, he played earlier, he got. He, he had to have gotten some wind in his sails, right? Yep. If he's the X Factor for this team, this was the, the X Factor matchup they were betting on, show us what you got. Hmm. Definitely, definitely. But, um, it all comes down to this now. They just eliminated the possibility of there being a tiebreaker. Yeah, this team. is likely group A, whoever gets out winner side versus loser side, it rides on this set, right? Yep. It's Basically, all down to this. It's on, it's on Joe Crush's shoulders mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, no pressure. No pressure, yeah. I, no I, I, pressure. Uh, maybe a little pressure. You're just maybe. facing like one of the <laughs> All right, with that being said, before we continue, we gotta stop by the analyst table real quick. So, over to Spag and the analyst real quick. All right, all right, all right. We've got a little bit of drama here right now with the USA versus France matchup. Yeah, dude. It's been a really, really good one so far, though. That first match, Joey, uh, sorry, Joey Fury going up against Guni. Um, not sure what happened there, man, but yeah. Guni just really wasn't able to get anything started. Joey took that quite comfortably. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looked like he was having issues with his controller, yeah. and it sucks when you're on a such a critical stage on a, on a moment like this when you need to get out of your group, but it is what it is, unfortunately, and Joey won that, but uh, Anakin, it, it's really interesting USA's strategy Great. for right, having yes. going through this, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were talking about it over here, we're thinking, okay, so if Anakin wins here, then they're up 2-0, and the boss position doesn't really matter, because even if you lose, you have another chance after the tiebreaker. Right. But, but if Anakin loses, then now you can lose the entire set. And that's where they're at now because Jod has defeated Anakin, which means Joe Crush has to win now. And it's a 1-1 situation. So now Joe Crush has to go up against Super Kuma, which is a match we haven't really seen. Yeah. Right? We know that Anakin has gone back and forth Super Kuma, so is Joey. But Joe Crush is kind of like untested here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm not sure if these guys have played in tournament before or how many times they've played in casuals either. But as you guys said, it was a risky strategy to, mm -hmm. to put Anakin the guy that you would usually think to go for the boss um, in, in that second middle match position. But like we said before the match began, you know, Super Akuma is the key to victory here for France, right? That he, yeah. he is the guy that has beaten jo uh, Joey and Anakin quite convincingly. But uh, as we say that, we see Joey here that went up against Guni. And Guni just not, not backdashing, not no. doing anything. Even uh, at when he got launches, not, not able to get any Simple any, any combo. Combos. Like, just yeah, down yeah, forward 1-1, yeah, one, yeah. one, he didn't get the second hit in time, which is like, you know there's some kind of issue. Yeah, I don't know if the viewers at home are familiar with Guni at all, but this is not the level of play you would have expected out of him. Certainly not. Yeah, for sure, man.
round, so hopefully you can get those sorted. But we came into this match, and this was the one that I guess the USA really needed to happen, right? They needed the win here so that they could secure a, a, a good strategy going into the boss match. I mean, USA, man, we, sometimes we like to go all in, and <laughs> they were willing they were willing to potentially sacrifice the boss battle if, if this strategy worked, and it unfortunately did not. So now, Joe Crush, he has stepped up today. Against, he has. He has against uh, Sergei. It was close, though. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That match is still close. The thing about this that's crazy to me, though, right, is that you take Anakin out of that boss position, which is a longer set. Everyone knows the longest that the bear player has a better chance of winning, right? But now he only had a first of two. He loses that one, and now he's gone. And now it's up to Joe Crush to win the long set against Super Kuma, who's proven in long set, basically. A lot of pressure on Joe Crush's shoulders right now to yes. keep USA's dreams alive here for this set. Um, but this is where, this is the opportunity, right? I mean, like they say, pressure makes diamonds. And this is an opportunity for Joe Crush to show that he is here to play, man. If he's able to take out Super Kuma when the other two players on his team weren't able to in the past, that would be a massive, massive statement. So this is a big opportunity for Joe Crush. And that's the way he should be thinking about this, I believe. I think, <laughs> don't think about this as, oh my God, and I now need to play Super Kuma and keep my, uh, our team alive. Think of it as an opportunity, right? Think oh, of yeah. an opportunity to like really make your country proud. Let's not forget his pop-up earlier. Oh, yeah. Right? All right. This, that's what it's going to be about right here. He yeah. wins this set, he can do it again. It's going to be amazing. I think we're going to get more than I that. I mean, though. either <laughs> either Joe Crush loses and America, unfortunately, ends up looking a little foolish, or he wins and he turns into a damn legend. I mean, and yeah, and then they look the opposite of yeah. foolish, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, we were in control the whole time. It's what a team's you, format. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys actually think, though, of this matchup, then? What do you think of the uh, opportunity? Have these Maybe the geese? Who knows? The geese might come out here. Have these two ever crossed paths? I, I don't, don't remember. Not that I know. I, I mean... Yeah. Maybe some dojo events. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about Joe Crush is, you know, although he is a newer player, he doesn't have like the top eight results yet at a major offline event, right? right? So we haven't seen him with this level of pressure, but he is definitely one of those players who can compete at the highest level. He's always able to compete. He has the tournament mentality and it's always prepped and ready to go. So in this situation, I have no concerns about it. Like I know he will step up to the plate. I mean, this is someone that's been able to beat Chikorin and, and other top players around the world. You know, I remember he beating Chikorin at EVO. A lot of people were surprised, but we were like, no, I mean, this is Joe Crush. This is someone that has been grinding in and out. And, you know, anytime you talk to him, you just constantly talk about Tekken. Constantly talking about Tekken, constantly talking about like strategies and different things. Like has the, the passion to want to go to other scenes as well and experience their Tekken. I mean, this is someone who is one of the most passionate players in the world, but he is going up against Super Akuma, who seems to have Joey's number, seems to have Anakin's number. Does he have Joe Crush's number, though? I want you guys' prediction for this one. Who's going to take it? I think that Joe Crush has beat Chikorin at EVO and CEO. Mm -hmm. So that's like a former TWT champion, right? Yeah. I think he can get this done. Rudhok, what do you think, man? All right, so he beat Chikorin. Yeah. Chikorin beat Olsan at TWT with Akuma. Okay. He's got this. He's got this in the bag against Super. Akuma. Yeah, that's the by, by the or, that's it's just math. There's some that's kind of the math. That's simple math. Yeah, it's just simple math. Damn, so simple. But math. I failed math in school, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but ladies and I wonder what you think's gonna happen at home. But this is gonna be it. It comes down to this first to three right now. Whoever takes it will be taking the match. Here we go, ladies and lads. It is Super Akuma versus Joe Crush. All right, thank you so much, Spag and the analyst. But yeah, they pulled it very succinctly, honestly. This is a deciding match. And it all rests on Joe Crush, allegedly. Like, all eyes are on him right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, they, they, they put in that bold strategy. <laughs> bold strategy? <laughs> it's a bold but, strategy, God. But the thing is, like, hey, man, Joe, show us something, man. It would be a legendary moment for him, definitely, because I, I am aware of Joe Crush, fine. Like, maybe n many people aren't aware of him, but I know that he can play very well. He can rise to the occasion, definitely. So it would be quite legendary if he just secured this win for his team against, like, one of the demons of EU, essentially. Yeah, I think it's the part that makes it hard is, like, longer set. Hmm. You know? Oh, yeah, it's a first to three this time, instead of a first to two. And that makes a huge difference. Right off the bat. Super Kuma establishing control in the mid range like this. Nice. Like 4 4 4. Ooh. Wild DP. Joe Crush ready with the uppercut. Oh, but drops a combo. Into a drop. <laughs> Never mind. Makes it, <laughs> finds another launch. Doesn't matter. Found another combo in the corner. Don't worry Push about the wall. it. High splat. Beautiful. Just Establishing like that. wall pressure here. Nice, Joe Ooh. Crush. What a good option against the Power Crush as well. Yeah. That low has multiple uses. Nice, good punish. He could have launched that potentially, actually. Oh, well, Super Kuma's focus is uh, elsewhere, I, I assume. Oh, Bottom nice. left corner of your screen, too. Finally, yeah, leverages a little bit of that meter that he gained in the first round. Straight to the wall. Just to be able to do this, man. Minus 50%. Nice. One more hit to do it. 
Hey, right, Joker's gotta get out of here somehow. Oh, low cross chop. Mm -hmm. Nice, another, no break. Another volcano blast. This is dead. Potentially. Uh, yeah, it's dead. Joe Rush, early statement here. Wow. This is we were talking about. Oh, Super Kuma. <laughs> he got his like face on his hand. You're like, oh, God. You gotta break them throws, fam. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Trying to establish some lows here. Super Kuma oh, nice. finds the sweet. Nice. Just, yeah, jab him down for one pressure. Soups has been in this position before. He can totally make the comeback. In. Nice. And the low cross cut. Plant the seeds. Ooh, not bringing the Ooh, throw again. Triangle throw. Pyramid throw, rather. Trying to lay on him. Joe Cross. Get the ground hit. Ooh, no, it was too far away for a combo, yeah. yeah. This point, you gotta imagine Joe is gonna be a little bit nervous about putting weapons Ooh. out there. Talk to the hand. Ooh. Right, just like that. This is Joe Crush's match to lose. And oh, just like that. Crush, very impressive. Wow, very strong start. Yeah, that was a scary situation at the end of that last round just because, you know, Kuma had one bar one bar to back him up. Yep. And then he's in rage like that with your back to the wall. It's kind of scary, but mm. he kept his composure. He put out the right weapons in mid range to be able to Definitely. intercept. And he went in as soon as the meter was off the table. He's like, all right, now yeah, is the true. chance. You that's capitalize true. on that. Because it's just like an empty chamber at that point, you know? You got no bullets to be scared of. Just go in, and go also, in for yes, kill. Another thing too, we, we talked about it earlier. You didn't see it as much, but Joe Crush representing throws. He's representing, yeah. you know, Jack's throws. He's leveraging that against Super Kuma. And yeah. Super Kuma was not ready for them. But didn't break a single one, I don't think. Oh, that nice uh, hitbox cam there, sponsored by Hitbox, maybe. <laughs> 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 All right, no, but Joe Crush, that was very solid performance, man. It's totally convincing. I know, like, uh, Rip and Bloodhog were like, nah, he can take it. After that match, I think he can take it, actually. Seems doable. I mean, he's got to be feeling confident after the way that first game went, but it's a long set. You can't count mm -hmm. him. Obviously, Super Akuma, he's been in this situation, you know. A million times. Yeah. Uh, he experience on, especially, like, international stage, we talked about that, right? But mm. Joe Crush... I mean, that was, uh, that was a hell of a first game. A hell of a statement. And we're going straight back in. Don't you want to change the stage or nothing? Same, yeah, like, same nah, stage. And everything, you know. Let's see what we got. Joe Crush not backing away. He's going in. Counter hit and balcony break here. All right, Stomping nice. Stomping on him. Ooh. Oh, my God. Stop sign, Das Boot. Bro, we're just going in. Oh. It's a sweep, it's another. All right. Ooh. It is a Kuma. Oh, yeah. It is a Kuma, you do have to respect that. He's still alive and he's going to have leader at the end of this too. Pair. Oh my god. Ooh, Super the combo just goes Akuma, on. oh no! my god. Goodness, the combo just goes on. Super Kuma is a bad man, oh my god. Yeah. He's, that... not, he's like, yeah, good, nice, got that. A break from the momentum. All right. Ooh. And now that confidence, man. That confidence that Joe Crush had at the beginning of the last round. No, you gotta hold on to that, Chief. You gotta it, hold on to that. It feels like Super Kuma iced him a little bit. No, 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 no. That's just one round, homie. Listen, you, no. you got this. Yeesh. Joe Crush missed uppercut there, and then, man, Super Kuma made him pay. He's got half a bar bill going into this, this round. Oh, it's like a tug and war. Oh. Okay, raw uppercut to be able to catch the whiff there. He's legit tug of war over here. He's got like a meter ready though. Flat. Gotta be careful on the wake up. EXDP all is option. Here. <laughs> Good answer with the low parry. Parallel to the wall here. Nice. The get up kick. <laughs> Love to see it from Joe Crush still alive. He ain't giving up this match for no reason whatsoever. He is fighting hard. Nice. It's good Super Kuma's taking it like nice and easy as well. He's got two bars of meter though. Yeesh. Let's that's... get dangerous. Oh, oh my god. Oh, no. nice flow. Beautiful conversion. Big float slide on in. And this is what Joe Crush wants. This position. Ooh. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, you do not yeah, drop this combo. Yeah, just hold up forward. <laughs> just hold up forward, Joe. <laughs> do not drop this combo, Soups. He's got the meter to back it up too. Here's the thing though, Joe Crush and Rage. Yeah, still got one bullet in the chamber. chamber. You gotta be careful about that. Ooh. Ooh, just nice. Uppercut, no oh. run. Final round, potentially Final set round. point for no. Wait, this is, sorry, for street. I mean, you got the job. You got the soups. A jab float. <laughs> All right, short of the wall. Just watch out for that meter. For one. Let's 
really does. The really movement does. from Super Akuma, though, he rotates around, gets Beautiful. the ball advantage. Beautiful wall start with the Full forward bar. string. Alright. Dangerous situation, oh, down three. No. Oh, side wall! He was dropped of the from the from from jump run. We're going in, we're going in. You gotta, you gotta play around <laughs> the bar. Oh, oh my goodness. It. Super Akuma back in the mix, 1-1. One, one. Oh, that well was played. very close. That was, man, I'm thinking. That was so close to being too old. Oh my God. That was a proper back and yeah, forth, that's... like proper tug and war there. Like well, for a second, it looked like, oh, Super Akuma, he's got this now. And then Joe Crush woke up, he's like, no. Like once again, it's like, oh my goodness. I legit thought, I almost said like set point for Joe Crush. With the way this set has gone, Sue is like, Rage has played a really big role. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. On, on, on both sides, whether it's yeah. been from Super Akuma, like this round was crazy. Tatsu, Tatsu again, wall fight again. Expert conversions, honestly. Like, goes to show he has been in this ballpark a million times. He knows what to do. Super Akuma knows, not, knows what to do with the bullets in the chamber. Yeah, it lets that run up down three, has the meter to, meter to back it up. At that point, just block out, take the round. I like that. <laughs> honestly, Majin, I think that's how we looked in the last match as Probably, well. Probably, <laughs> yeah, right? Dude, I... The end, of, the end of that first round was crazy. I couldn't I could believe that. Oh, I can Soups, mega relatable soups. I love you. But yeah, well, we've evened it out now, actually. We're prolonging this uh, set. Prolonging the last match of the set, actually. Really. Honestly, the longer this goes on, the less certain I am who's gonna take this match, honestly. I, I mean, Joe Crush, I think, is surprising a lot of people right now. That was, that was a very close game. Very close and very dominant. Whatever decisions the both of them make, they make it with certainty and they make it optimally. Forgotten realm now. Mm. Yeah, I think Jack definitely has the advantage in this stage overall. Like, a lot of his throws just turn into launchers, and Soups wasn't really breaking them earlier. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you got to assume he's probably going to go... He might go back to leveraging the throw game a little mm. bit, especially after how Super Kuma fared in that first game. He was getting the, he was getting Tombstone. He was getting a uh, Pyramid Drive. It's worth a shot. I would Round go for it. One. Why not? Fight. All right. Right off the bat, we're just going in. Nice punish. Could have gone better, but hey. Ooh, yes, we do those around here. Of course, that one earlier go last game. This one, not so much. Nice. We're gonna take it. Just take the full break. Get my push. Blast punch. Oh, beautiful. All right, what's the okay? All right, that's not a great punish. Represent these low pokes in close range. Mm. Close quarters like that gets a sweep. All right, back to neutral, back to footsies. <laughs> yeah, Super Kuma trying to vary up his approach a little bit too. He's willing to back off oh, yeah. fireballs a little bit just to see what Joe Crush how, how he wants to uh, deal with it, you know? Something he wasn't doing earlier. Yeah, I think because this is a party stage as well, yeah, I imagine it's in the back of Soup's mind that you don't want to run into a throw or something, right? Especially not while you're doing like a power crush charge or something, because then the throw's unbreakable. That's another floor broken. Shotgun is just short of the wall. Right. One floor break left, who's gonna utilize it? Ooh. I'd break that. Big oh no! Joke he tried, oh, he tried! No. He tried to break it! Ball launch, break. Yeah, there we go. Smart Shot play here. No. Focus attack and then clock out. Super Akuma. Very smart play there. I, like, if I was them, I wouldn't even care about doing optimal combo. Like, you rob the floor break, you are robbing combo opportunities. Down to me, I got my bar, I got the wall, high split off the DP. Ooh. Almost got another bar build. 50% gone yeah, already. Yeah, build too. There we go, Joe Crush with a chance though. Yeah, Joe Crush still in it. He's still in it, not Getting dead at all. Getting off the wall, trying to step a little bit to the left. Trying to get this position like that. Smart decision. Or two, Ooh. just out of range of the move, but he finds the low parry and the low get up kick. That's so sad. Gotta extend the leg next time, Joe Crush is swinging. That brother wants his upper so bad. Oh, this could be dead. This could be dead. But now I don't know anymore if it's gonna be dead. But... Oh. <laughs> and the yeah, lightning FX too. Misuts. Yo. I think you saw the way that Super Kuma looked back at his teammates after that. Just yep. Head nod, just affirmation. He's very confident. Right yep. Now. That, that was good. Like put the wind in his sails, as you would yeah. say. That was that was a good match. And like you won that convincingly. I think like 
what helped as well. We saw him be like a little more reserved with his offense now. We noticed him just like going back a bit, just sticking to like small pokes instead of just like going all into the meter usage as well. I yeah, think the analysts talked about it too, right? They felt like a Super Kuma in the longer set hmm. probably in his favor, and you can see it now. It's like obviously the first two games, a bit of a bit of a scramble, a bit of you know, a bit of a bit of a barnyard busting, <laughs> but this third game he's starting to wrangle control a little bit. I think the stage really benefited him ultimately as Definitely. well. Definitely. That's, uh, I guess I gotta eat my words there. I thought uh, Joe Crush was gonna be in the favor on the stage, but nah. Super Kuma knows how to like rob those uh, floor breaks as well. Very important to be able to like rob floor breaks from characters who can utilize them much better. I really liked how Super Kuma approached too. He had, he varied his approach a lot more this game mm. compared to the previous two games. So I'm willing, at least in the early rounds, willing to just kind of do some hit and run, back off, throw some Definitely. fireballs, see how Joe, Joe Crush wants to react. And he caught Joe Crush Obviously, Joe, Joe was able to get a lot of return off of uppers and just, of you know, raw launchers in neutral, yeah. but he caught Joe a few times trying to swing a little bit too mm -hmm. aggressively and when he, when, the, when he wasn't in range. You know, obviously, they're trying to snipe in an approach attempt, but it, ultimately, Super Akuma was able to get control there, and mm -hmm. I think he's still, he's still riding that momentum, it feels like. Going to Jungle Outpost 2 here. That's very smart. If he, if he can continue doing this, he's making adjustments over the set as as he has done a million times over. That's the benefit of Round having experience one. of years and years and years playing this Fight. game. Now this is potentially like the final match of the night, potentially. If Super Kuma can cinch this out for France, then they are in a very good position for tomorrow. Of course, they're jumping over each other. Alright, nice. Planet Seeds. Good challenge for Joe Crush. Alright, nice. Yeah, getting out of there. You gotta get all your damage. Jab pressure. Punish that. Nice. Nice. Okay. Woo! Joe Crush. All right. Round two. Beautiful. I love when you see that move, man. Like, it comes out so rarely when it does to get higher. Ready to challenge. Ooh. Super Akuma's pressure in a lot of spots that round. Here we go. That's Super Akuma with the meter to back him up. Look at this reward. 50% wall pressure. We have no punish. Disgusting damage. But I was going to say, you can see that in like, the little downtime that there was between matches. They're like, they don't want to spend any time on like thinking or hesitation. They just want to go straight back into it. Ride out their individual momentum. Hopefully to victory. With the wall and now Super Akuma finds that round. Round three. Almost half a bar build here. Oh my god. Could this be any more equal? <laughs> All right. Oh, you could have died for that. Super Kuma's spacing has been really, really just excellent. Very good. Like that, he's making the jackhammer whip to and whip punish it properly this time. Down through the half a bar behind it, look at what you Beautiful. get. Beautiful awareness on like the wall as well. I'll be honest, I didn't know it was there. <laughs> All right, nice. Mid kick with. Find the sweet demon throw. Again, his throw game and <laughs> Oh, snipe out here. Oh my god. Crouch jab in the back and that was a scramble. sweet Round Super Akuma set point to put France on top of Group A. Oh my goodness. It's all or nothing right here. Super Akuma, time to pull out all the stops, Chief. You want this match. You want this round. Joe Crush beating the low here, though. Ooh. Trying to keep it close, give Team USA a chance. Right, nice. Joe Crush. Ooh. Power crushed all the way through. Beautiful. Joe Crush. Oh my god, he's evening it out. He is not down for the count whatsoever. Here's the thing, go bottom left corner of your screen. Oh my god. You gotta pull in the chamber. That's a lot of blue. Yeesh. You might not get the chance to use it though. Oh no. If he does his Oki correctly. Gotta watch out for the EXDP though. Be careful how you apply your Oki for him. Swall pressure against the low. That's one meter gone. This could be it. Joe Crush blocking out there. Oh my god, Joe Crush evens it up. Oh my goodness. The wall pressure. Oh my goodness. This is so equal. Joe Crush. Damn. And look at Joey Fury hyping him up. <laughs> well, he, he is like, he is the light in the darkness. This is, but this, this is team tournaments. Yeah. This is team tournaments. Your, your, turn, your teammate is doing something that nope, everybody had you written off on like that. Well, no, Joe Crush definitely given a boot to all of yeah, the naysayers right now. Him, you see him performing like this? Like, I don't think a lot of people had Joe Crush be, you know, being able to perform like this. Yeah. In this slot, in the boss position like that? He's playing out of his mind though. Oy, I, felt, I felt that suits. I felt that. <laughs> I love these player camps, fam. I hope this is like a thing more often. This is team tournament dynamic though. You see Joey now talking him through it. You know, you have some cool down time like this. Bro, you, 
when you're playing well. <laughs> you're playing well, yeah. instilling confidence in his teammate, and just, he's really close to me. Oh my god. This is insanely close. Dude, y'all gotta be ready to, oh, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> I might like end up accidentally screaming on my egg, I'm sorry about this. This is so close, this is so intense. Can you pick like a better match to end the it's day the with? It's the fact that it comes down to the last game in this set between you. Man, this is crazy. And in the very last match of the first day, fam. <laughs> this is insane. I'm enjoying myself. I key shout out to like Gamers Nation, fam. Gamers 8 Nation. What a sick tournament. What a great match to end this on. Either way, I'm just gonna be like shook. I'm gonna have like my my hand in my head be like, wow, I don't know what I'm just witnessing right now. Anyone's game, fam. Anyone's game. I definitely feel the tension now. You can see them on their faces now. Soups, Joe, both of them just like wearing that tension raw. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you have to, you have to believe that he feels some sense of pressure now, right? Yeah, there's a lot on the line. As long as he maintains that focus level, you know, the high focus level that he showed so far. This is so close, fam. This is so close. Like, both are equally focused, equally stressed, and then there is proper tug and war, like the dominance. They just keep exchanging it between each other for the matches. It could just come down to like a scramble moment for all I know, really. Tough decision. Yeah, this one's rough. What does it come down to? Super Kuma, he gets to pick the stage. I, he's not going to be changing his character anytime soon. So what stage would you go to to try and clinch that win? An infinite, maybe? Uh, no, wait, right? Dragon's Nest, still more rounded stage. I get that, I get that. L less uh, wall shenanigans too over here. This one's a doozy, man. Mm. This one's got this one. Man, this is a huge game here. Ooh. I'm on the edge of my seat, almost quite. All right, this is gonna decide it. This is the match that's gonna decide the placements for France and USA tomorrow in their Round group. One. It's all or nothing. Fight. We saw Joe Crush move to pull it out a little bit more as well. From the UCC team, too, that he's been playing around that. I mean, that's kind of like his trademark thing anyway, but like, he started to pull it out a little bit more as well. Yep, just go. like that, just as he said it. <laughs> On point with the tips today, Obama. I love it. Finds the launch. Lay that shoulder right. into him. Lower your shoulder. All right. No meter. You can go in. You can go in. Don't be afraid right now. Ooh. Look out for him, though. That crush. You're so close. Ooh. Super Akuma. Nice. Use the meter as soon as he got it to you. Dumping it all. Stop. Okay. One more hit could do it for either of them. Joe Crush commits to the guard, finds the low punch. Round two. Numbers. He's not ready for Fight. that. All right, first round goes to Joe Crush. Get him with that. Susan has to work really hard to build up that meter again. He used up the meter trying to get that combo to reach the wall. It didn't work out. I cannot count. I cannot count enough. You cannot count out. Joe no Crush, you gotta be able to play for this. Ooh, he can't punish that, I don't think. Complete Ooh. game right here. Uppercut. Here's the wall. Just Thompson short. There. Nice dash block. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking for the left, for the left of DP. Nice, nice, nice. Alright. Jack, Jack Hammer. Soups, you gotta find a way out of here. Oh, they Oh my god, they are. What is this, Antio? Show crush set point. Antio with the body press. Super Kumar <laughs> at the bar to his name. Deep are gonna start the round. Oh no! Oh, He's going in. So close to punish. Oh no! Jack Amber, talk to the head. Bro, he's just going in. He's going in. Is this match to lose? You gotta oh, use the meter. You gotta Super use the meter. Super Kumar with the red dress though. Oh no! Good duck, your crush. Oh no! Jack Harris! Apologize! Joe Crush! Apologize! <laughs> Joe Crush! Y'all better, hey, y'all better call that boy Joe Clutch, man. That's crazy. <laughs> you nickname the fucking goal! Yo, and I'm gonna get y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Apologize, bruh. Joe Clutch! Holy, oh. I can't believe that happened that way. Legendary. Team USA with the dub. Huge Legendary. W over for France. He clutched that so well. His team needed him, and when they needed him, he performed. He was ready. He did it for his what team right there. What a set. And I don't think anybody had that pen to go down 
the way it went down. Oh I God. certainly did. That I didn't great. either. Like, I, I wasn't sure who was going to win, but I didn't expect to be so down to the wire. I don't know how I'm going to sleep after this, fam. Wow. <laughs> Oh, this is last match. How am I going to sleep after this? <laughs> That's big. That puts Team USA in position for this group. USA, France. Oh, oh my God. USA, France, Jordan, and Peru in this group. Jesus. Team USA with W's over Team Peru and Team France. They're going to play Team Bel Team yep. Team yeah. Jordan tomorrow. That's crazy. What a turn of events here. Yeah, USA just sitting pretty up here now. Um, well, while we have that going on, we're going to go straight to the uh, team interviews. We need to hear from the player, the legendary player himself, Mr. Joseph Crush. <laughs> on to you, Stacey Steve, in a bit. All right, never mind. Um, Joe Crush, this, you're going to be in the uh, Hall of Fame for that one. Oh, soups. I can't wait to hear what the analysts have to say oh, after that, man. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what everyone has to say from the players, the analysts, Stacey Steve. The Arabic commentator, he's, a, he's fun to listen to, even if what I have no idea what he's set. saying. I cannot stress that. What a set. I don't know. I'm going to sleep tonight, Chief. I'm going to have to find a way, though. Look That's going to be... hands. That's crazy. Oh, my God. That was intense. Proper. You see, like, the intensity in their eyes? Man, what... This was down to the wire. This was down to the wire. <laughs> Goonie in the back is just like, oh, no. <laughs> All right, then. We're going to be switching to interviews soon, I think. Yeah, we're going to check in with Tasty Steve and see what he has to say with, uh, with the players on stage. All right. But, man, we hope you guys enjoyed that set. That was a hell of a set to close out on. Hope to see you tomorrow. Not to Tasty Steve. Yo. Yo, crowd. Was that not some good-ass tech? Make some noise for me one time, please. <laughs> and you guys stayed here through the whole thing. That is crazy. First off, let me say congratulations on the victory. How were you feeling going into the Akuma match versus Super Akuma? Because that dude is a damn good Akuma. Yeah, uh, just want to say shout out all the Akumas I play at home. Um, Geese Joestar, Big Bird. Uh, you know, there's you know not too many out there, but the ones I do play with, you know, I get my reps in all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? Jack's a good matchup. You know, I'm not uh, super tuned to like into you know the side stepping or dashing forward. I just rely on my two jab. You know what I'm saying? So I keep it simple. I like to keep it simple. And I've always been ready for the Akuma matchup. I got to I'm trying to keep it going. بعد الحقيقة الانتصار الفريق الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية كان السؤال نبغى نعرف كيف كانت المباراة ضد شخصية أكوما كانت الإجابة أن أول شيء يقول شكرا لكل اللي لعب ضدهم في هذه الشخصية قدر أنه يزيد الثقة ويتدرب بشكل مرة ممتاز ويشوف برضو اختيار جاك جدا ممتاز ضد هذه الشخصية فقدر أنه يتفوق في هذه المباراة فألف مبروك الفريق الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية تحقيقهم النصر في هذه المباراة وضمانهم حتى برضو التأهل all right we only got time for one more question but this is more strategic was this the plan the entire time were you guys like look we know they're going to anchor super akuma you are the person that's going to fight him was this the plan the entire time yeah it was pretty obvious i mean unless they wanted to do a real big surprise with jod but um you know me and anakin i think we were both uh you know going back and forth who should play jod and I told him, you know, I think I feel more comfortable against Super Kuma. Jad, you know, he seems really good. Hitbox, you know, coming out of nowhere. Just un, un, a question mark for me. So I felt safer going with the Super Kuma. He went up against Jad, and I'm glad I clutched up. You know what I'm saying? I, it was a strategy the whole time. Guys, the original Joe Crush, ladies and gentlemen. Jeez. السؤال كان هل كانت هذه الخطة من البداية من الفريق أنهم يختارون الشخصية ويختارون اللعيبة ضد شخصية أكوما لكن هو فعليا كان يقولون كان فعلا هذه الخطة وكانت فعلا واضحة حتى برضو للجمهور وقدروا يتفوقون فيها كانوا ما كانوا حتى برضو مترددين من فريق فرنسا أنهم يكونترونهم أو أنهم يلعبون بشخصيات مختلفة لكن قدروا أنهم يحققون النصر وقالوا لنا أوكي كان هو برضو محتار أن هل هو بيلعب شخصية ثانية ولا لا لكن مع ذلك كان واثق بشخصية جاك فعلا لعب with that being said, man, I always keep, I keep doing it. I keep doing it. I apologize. We're going to send it to the studio. الحين أعزائنا المشاهدين نتكلم في تفاصيل باقي المباراة المبروك الفريق الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية تحقيق من نصر نتكلم تفاصيلها عند الاستوديو التحليلي. Well, with that being said, USA takes it over France there in an amazing boss match. Joe Crush taking it over at Super Akuma in an upset. I guess you could consider an upset, right? 
What a boss match we had there, guys. Crazy. What do we think about it? That was the plan all along, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was the plan, dude. I mean, the wild part about it, obviously, before we went to break, I was talking about how I believe in Joe Crush to do it. He plays the highest level. He's beating Chickman, etc. So I knew he was capable of it, right? But the way right. that that match played out was crazy. It looked like Super Kuma had adapted after the first game. Mm. Joe Crush had to fight his way back into it. And by the end of it, you just saw the momentum building. That's what Joe does to people. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the day where we talked talk about USA, potentially three Jack players. These three Jack players do not play the same at all. Exactly. And Joe Crush, out of all of them, is the brawly Jack. He wants to scrap with you up close. He's willing to press the buttons. He's willing to believe in these reads with the, the forward twos, the down, down forward four twos. twos. That jungle outpost game, they just went up in Super Akuma's face while standing <laughs> one. And it's just oh, like, that was he's, crazy. He's willing to put it put it all on the line on that belief and you know it looked like it made Super Kuma very uncomfortable. 100%. I mean, it looks like, uh, as we see some of the replays, that Joe Crush really does want to enforce that scrambly playstyle upon you, right? Once he starts to do it, once he starts throwing out these crazy moves, it kind of makes the opponent a little bit more, uh, a little bit scared to approach, right? And then mm -hmm. you do end up just getting a little bit annoyed and, and, and end up brawling. And that's exactly what Joe Crush wanted. Super Kuma then, in the end, it looked like backing off a little bit, changing his approach because he was afraid of what was happening. There's so much pressure just on this set here, because now in this situation, USA is very set to be making it into the upper bracket for the you know, for the top eight. You know, yep. now their only obstacle is really Jordan, and you know they, you would say that they are the weaker side of this of this group as well. So there was so much hanging on yep. that first three, and the question on everybody everyone's mind was. Is Joe Crush going to rise to the occasion? And he absolutely did that. Yeah, I think the, the thing that's really interesting about this specific pick was Joe Crush's interview where he said that he wasn't sure about John. It was a question mark to him, right? So they basically looked at the points of the boss match at two points to one. He's like, I don't know. I can, I can maybe lose that one point, but let's risk the two points. You know, like that was the thought process because I think I can win that one. So whatever, you think you win, just and, go get it. And I think with this on screen right now is, was game four and it looked like he had no business winning this game and bringing it to a game five. But oh, he yeah. just started playing out of his no mind. Clutch. Yeah. That low parry that was clutch. And of course, Super Kuma had a big drop there. Yeah. Yeah. The, right, the, yeah right before that was like a down four, three fireball, FADC, yeah. and he flubbed it. And why did Super Kuma pick a wall stage here? That was my big question. Every game that Joe Crutch had a chance, he picked a wall stage. So why not take him away from the wall exactly. stage? Exactly. There was not much strategy, I feel like, going in there. You know, a timeout would have been a good uh, decision. And just think about the situation, right? Like, we haven't really been seeing that with some of these teams. When the pressure's on, you just default to what you're used to. But yeah. going to a infinite would have been good there. But either way, Joe Crush did take in. He's going to be our India MVP here for uh, today in this USA versus France matchup. No surprises there at all. What a lad. Joe Crush taking over Super Kuma and putting, giving his team a, the best chance to make it into the winner's side there. And a big shout out as well to Joey and Anakin for, you know, these are, these are the veteran players, but mm. they let the newbie, they let the new guy say, do you know what? We'll give you the opportunity in the boss match. We're going to put our faith on in, on you to to take us uh, take us home. Exactly. And, you know, Joe Crush is one of these players who has been grinding online since the pandemic, you know, there weren't as many offline events, but he's just been leveling up year over year. And now he's gotten to this point where you're seeing him take out the top level competition, the biggest prize with tech in history. And as you mentioned, his veterans, Joey Fury and Anakin, are like, we trust you to do this. Go get it done. It's amazing. Yeah. That's real teamwork right and there. And I think it's really interesting for him because I believe he was just coming off of a uh, disappointing performance in his home state of Texas. Uh, I believe he got like a seventh. Couple. Yeah, he got like seventh at, uh, what was it, the big house in Texas, I believe it is? The big baddie? Yes, something like that. Something like that. And he got, like, he got like seventh place when he's supposed to be one of the strongest players in the country. So a little bit disappointed. I'm CEO glad he, as well. Yeah, I'm glad he managed to shake it off and come in and he's like, okay, I'm on this team, these guys believe in me, I have to match their expectations, and he has, twice now, he has done so beautifully. Yeah, he had a tweet he put out where he's like, man, it's been rough for me the last couple of tournaments, you know, but I'm gonna put in my work, I'm gonna get this done, you know, let's get it done in Saudi, basically. I so, mean, all the frustration working. was put into this match, and it, and it was an important one as well. Well, ladies and lads, let's have a look at the overall standings of all the groups right now and see where we are and where all the teams are as well, moving into day number two. We have Group A here coming up, and USA, there they are, man, sitting with two set wins, and their remaining match is gonna be Jordan, who haven't been able to get a win yet, so you gotta be thinking, ladies and lads, that USA are in prime position to be making it into the winner's side there. Of course, France and Peru, it Ooh. now becomes a battle between those two, potentially, unless Jordan can do something and, you know, potentially uh, cause an upset. But I think that it really does now come down to the, the Peru in front. Right? If Jordan
Jordan, if looking at these standings, if Jordan manages to beat USA, even though France lost that set, you look at the matches won and the games won differential, it's actually very close with USA. Right. So if they end up, if Jordan manages to pull it off, the upset, and France manages to beat Peru, they're through the number. You know, Weird numbers might happen, and France right. still might be able to make it out into uh, into upper bracket. Yeah, it's a small chance, but it's definitely there, and we've seen crazier things happen, right? And that's yeah. why it, that's why even in loss, it's important to keep the match as close as possible. And of course, the two teams are going to be making it to the top eight, right? The other two teams, they go off to the other bracket, basically, right? So Captain's that's super Captain. important, exactly. 100. percent Well, let's have a good Group B right now. Philippines and Korea, and we saw the Philippines play against Korea today. Korea did take mm, it in the so end close. with the boss match of AK and Ni, nee. um, but Bolivia getting the win against Germany. No way. Yes, and nobody would have thought that. Germany now sitting at the bottom of Group B, and a lot of people's picks moving into this wow. was that Germany was actually going to potentially win this set. It's, I mean, it's still possible to make it out, but the, you know, Bolivia causing probably the biggest upset of today. That is amazing. You know, Bolivia, uh, led by Noel, I got to believe. Yes. You know, just putting in the work and taking on Germany, and Germany was such a strong team on paper. Yes, definitely. But, you know, when it comes to these, the, the question that we had at the start of the broadcast was, you know, is the team format going to be something that people can get used to? You know, that, it Bolivia really versus Philippines tomorrow exactly. is going to be so important. That's mm. exactly what I was wondering about because obviously Philippines had a great day today. You know, but Dojin needs to step up. He's slacking a little bit for his teammates right here, right now. Yeah, yeah. and we're looking at Group C right now, and I'm guessing the majority of those matches will be happening tomorrow. But we do had a cup. We did have a couple of matches. We had Saudi Arabia going up against South Africa, and we had Pakistan versus South Africa as well. South Africa unfortunately losing both of those ones, but Saudi and Pakistan are in a good position right now. I feel like they can go home today and feel a little bit comfortable, right? Yeah, but tomorrow we kick off with Saudi versus Japan, right? So, Saudi, you're comfortable right now, but you know what you got in front of you tomorrow morning. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that one when we get there, but Saudi and Japan have got a lot of back and forth because, you know, right, they have right. a really good relationship mm -hmm. and they, they, they have these exchanges where Saudi Arabia goes to Japan, Japan's come to Saudi Arabia, and they've played a lot of Tekken together. So that'll be a very interesting one to watch. We have Ivory Coast and the UK here uh, as well at the top of Group D, Australia, unfortunately. Losing to the Ivory Coast and Thailand yet to play, wow. but... You know, still, I mean, Thailand is a big question for me as well. I feel yeah. like these guys can do extremely well. Book is on form right now. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the UK and Ivory Coast were set to play each other as well. They might be playing each other right now, actually, on the other I think screen. it was UK Ivory Coast. Yeah, UK yeah. Ivory Coast will be the, is the match happening, I believe, right now on the B stream. If you guys want to go uh, go over and head, uh, head, head there and watch that one. But, yeah, um, these, these standings are shaping up to be really interesting, man. It's wild, too, because... Thailand is the only team that hasn't played a single team today, right? No, Japan. Right. Japan. Japan as well. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So both of them get tomorrow to play all of their matches at once. Uh, it's one of those things it could where... could be a blessing or a curse. Exactly. Yeah. You're either on or you're off, and let's see what happens. Yeah. So, uh, man, if you had told me at the beginning of the day that USA would be the one that had two set wins going in, out of their group, I'd be like, man, that's crazy, but Possible. I can't wait to wake up. Possible. It's like, <laughs> I'm... It's, it feels good to not be disappointed. <laughs> wow! <laughs> no faith over here, man. Stars and stripes in these eyes. Don't you forget it. Hey, <laughs> Ivory Coast didn't let me down. What? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he said that Ivory Coast was going to be a potential okay. to make I mean, it I'm in. I'm rooting for him, too. I guess, look, we'll, same group. I guess we will find out tomorrow what's going to happen with these groups, ladies and lads. Rip, um, Bloodhawk, anything else you want to say before we close out? Dana Moore? Nah, man. Day one's been great, right? I mean, we had amazing action from top to bottom here. Federer at the top of the day, I think, still my favorite match. <laughs> like, what a match. crazy yeah. comeback he had there, right? So it's mm -hmm. been fun the whole way through. You know, I think the Korea-Philippine set was one of my favorites as well. Yeah. And ending on that note with NA versus, or USA versus France, uh, can't really end the day much better than that. Yeah, I think all five matches today have been excellent on this stream. I think the energy in the crowd, the energy from the players, from uh, you guys on the desk, it's been great today. It's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Bloodhawk, Rip, and everyone else as well. But day number one has concluded. We will be back tomorrow with some more Gamers 8 Tekken 7 Nations Cup action. We'll see you then.